there's a, a race we proposed or it had been announced already in race to Alaska. And it looks like it's going to be a rowing and sailing event, probably quite heavy in the rowing. And I would like to hear, I'd like to hear all of you actually, but uh, maybe pick John to start with, uh, what characteristics do you think the ideal boat would have for that trip? It's about 750 miles. Yeah. And you want to get there in as short a time as possible. Okay, well, my thoughts are along the lines of looking after the crew. The crew has to be able to stay on board. It's a ten thousand dollar first prize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the boat has to be able to be kept moving, so it has to sail well and row well. Probably not extreme in either direction, but it must look after the crew so that the crew does not have to stop, go ashore. So the critical thing, if it's lightish weather, the sail and oar boat will have a really good chance but it has to be able to be kept moving. One person down, one person up, on shifts. So, yeah, to elaborate a little, the boat will have to be able to be rowed comfortably at a reasonable speed in rice trim with another crew on board by one person. Yeah, it has to be able to be sailed fairly efficiently by one person. It must be able to rest the other crew. A race like that is going to go on for quite a few days, and if you can keep the, keep one person on board, on deck, as it were, working efficiently, then the boat won't be the fastest one. The boat won't be the fastest one, but it'll get there first. Now, I've just been asked to repeat the question. Yep, the question is, what type of boat is going to have the best chance in the race to Alaska. The race to Alaska starts here, June, is that right, Jay? Yep. Over to Victoria, which is essentially the qualifying leg. If you're not in good shape at the end of that, then you don't want to carry on. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a very long way to the next stop. And um, yeah, I've been looking at it with great interest. And, and it's going to be very weather dependent on what will win, I would think. Okay. Maybe maybe I, I'll try to address this one. We did a design for Dale McKinnon maybe eight or ten years ago, and she's the she has now rode solo from Skagway, Alaska to Puget Sound. The wow. first woman to ever do that, um, and that was strictly rowing. Um, I also done that trip more than a couple of times in my life, and. Uh, the, the winds are always going to be against you on that trip, if there is any winds. They're, they're not terribly strong at that time of the year, and that's one of the reasons why most boats head north at that time. And uh, it, in my opinion, the, the wind game would not be what I would be playing much at all. I have the capability, but it's, it's not going to be a wind game. This is inland passage stuff, and uh, the winds, if, if they're going to be there, they're going to be against you. And uh, so it's, it's going to be a hard slog, and the emphasis is going to have to be on, on rowing or sculling, and, and that's really going to be the game. But it can be done. And the boat that we did for Dale was 20 foot, basically a semi dory And you know, that gives you a good seaworthy shape. You have a relatively long water line. She was able to sleep on the boat, but you got to remember this is the north. So we've got 18, almost 20 hours of sunlight that time of the year, a day at least. And so the, uh, my call on it wouldn't be staying on the boat. I, I would have them try to get rest, and, uh, but I would have them take advantage, particularly of the early morning hours. Uh, that's when the winds aren't going to be as strong as, as they're going to be in the afternoon. And, uh, and, and just slog it out with more, again, with the rolling or sculling. I'm not now familiar with this very interesting race, but I'm glad to hear Sam's commentary on it. Because immediately when the question was asked, it occurred to me that it's a classic case of compromise because the best boat for rowing with lightweight, narrow for low weather surface, uh, is not the best boat for sailing where you need uh, stability and other attributes. So uh, 
apparently from what Sam says, it should be a very efficient rowing boat, which means uh, uh, good shape and uh, very lightweight and make all the difference in the world and a proper rowing setup. We can design the boat, but we can't design the crew. The crew just has to have good calluses, I think, really, than <laughs> all that rowing. And I would think that we can want a boat with very good endurance because if there are 20 hours of daylight, the winner is going to be somebody that can keep the boat going at least 20 hours. Um, I think uh, the prime requirement for this boat is going to be easily driven. Uh, you would, if, if it's light winds for sailing, you need easily driven. If it's rowing, you need easily driven. Long and slim, I think, is the way to go with it. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think I want to keep the keep the crew on the boat and keep the boat going all the time. The other thing that I think you need to keep in mind is my experience living on a boat for a dozen years out here was paying attention to currents and the, what's happening with the tide, which way it's going, when. It would make a big difference you know, when you get there and how you get there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.